Welcome to Early Bird Picker. My name is Rafa. I'm a reseller. I resell on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, Amazon, and I list stuff on Depop. I don't really sell anything on there. I've only sold one thing. Um, but anyway, this is my weekend what sold video. It is Q4, uh, like mid, basically December. I live in Oklahoma, and these are the things that I'm shipping out. Found this Stearns uh, women's dry wear, ja like waterproof jacket, basically. Paid a dollar for it at a thrift store by my house, and it sold for 10 plus shipping on uh, Facebook Marketplace. This is a vintage uh, polo sport Ralph Lauren long sleeve t-shirt it was tagged as a large but i put in the description that it fit more like a small or even a medium and i paid 250 for it just yesterday at goodwill and it sold overnight on facebook for 20 dollars plus shipping here are my ebay sales uh, paid 250 for the charlotte hornets hat it sold for 17 plus shipping picked up this pbr professional bull riders uh, black hoodie just a couple days ago paid six for it at goodwill and it sold for 33 plus shipping this was weird. <laughs> I picked up this glass pitcher by Leggett and Platt. I still don't really know what they make. Um, and honestly, I, I think I put this up on auction. I can't really remember why. I think it's because I had no idea what it was worth. It, it looked like it was like an employee award. It said safety award on it. And I put it up for auction for 99 cents. I think I paid two bucks for it at Goodwill. And someone sent me an offer um, for 11 bucks. No one had bid on it at all. So I went ahead and took that offer. $11 plus shipping. A couple weeks ago, I paid up for these Noble or Noble, um, basically like CrossFit training shoe, women's, and they were in an absolutely excellent condition. I paid $25 at Goodwill. I was really disappointed that they knew this brand. It's a really good high value brand, um, but I paid that much because I knew the resale value was really high on them. Um, they sold for $59 bucks plus shipping. This was a pretty cool find and sell. Um, I found these still new in the package, uh, Sears Roebuck men's t-shirts. I think that they're from the 60s. So it's just amazing that you'd find something like that still new in the package. And just if you are a new reseller and you find something really vintage, um, it's like new in the package, um, what you can use as, in your title that will help out your search on eBay is the term like NOS, new old stock, or you can use the word dead stock. And that's probably what I used on both of these. That really calls out that you've got something pretty special that's old and still like new in the package essentially. And that's something that certain people really seek out. So probably the situation is somebody wore this shirt decades ago and they love it and they still want it. They paid for, there's two of them in here, $45 plus shipping for these two uh, just blank white t-shirts. Um, they were size small. I was worried they were gonna sit for a while because they were such a small size. They sold in less than a week, maybe just a few days. Okay, here is the best sale of the day. One that I was super excited about and uh, watch my video that I made specifically just about this one sale. It has a whole story behind it, but it is Big Mouth Billy Bass. Um, if you don't know, the resale value on this is crazy high for what it is. I paid $2 for this at a garage sale. Um, it sat in my garage for quite some time because you can see the box looks like it's been opened and everything. When I finally took it out, it was still new. Like it still had its uh, wrapper on it essentially and plastic cover. I'll show you more in my other video that's just about this big mouth billy bass. But anyway, I listed it for $89.99 on eBay plus shipping, and I got my full asking price in less than a week, and I was super excited about it. Really high profit on this one. And like I said, there's a good story that goes along with it. Somebody on Facebook was harassing me basically about the sale price on this, and I ended up getting exactly what I wanted on it. Another small sale came through, Looney Tunes Tweety Halloween flag like decorative flag that you put outside your house essentially paid a dollar for this at a yard sale sold for eight plus shipping anytime i see a new sealed in the box or in the plastic filters i always look those up paid 33 cents a piece for both of these boxes so about 67 cents total into these i think it was three for a dollar so you know 66 67 cents and they sold in a couple days 15 bucks plus shipping this sale came through on facebook marketplace this is the nylon big pumpkin like tow truck or wrecker this truck is probably like 30 to 40 years old and the condition on it i called it i think i called it very good I probably would have called it excellent condition, except for you can see the windows, they're kind of cloudy on there. But like, just check out the tires on there, the underside, couldn't find any rust. 
Um, so I was just super happy with the condition of this. Paid five for it and it sold on Marketplace for 48 plus shipping. For me as a reseller, the longer I'm doing this, the more experienced I get. Probably everybody else is the same way. You see certain things for the right price, you grab it just automatically. And one of those new things for me is Realtree branded items. So Realtree is like, I'm guessing it's just like a branded camo, essentially. So um, well, I'll show the picture of these because you can't see them through the bag very well. But anyway, um, I picked up these Realtree uh, camo clogs at Goodwill. I paid six bucks for them. I was hoping that they were Crocs whenever I picked them up. They look like Crocs and everything, but they weren't branded as Crocs. They just had the real tree. And in if you're new to reselling and you want to start picking up real tree camo stuff, it's basically, um, well, I'll show a picture of it. In the camo, it will say real tree, and that's how you know. And anything that I've ever had camo real tree sells for good money really fast. And so this is a winter lined uh, real tree real tree clog paid six bucks for it at goodwill just a couple days ago and sold for 25 plus shipping so really it's not crazy high money but considering um that it's just a basic clog that is not croc branded it's pretty good money it's going to ship out first class but the buyer did pay shipping for these so just wanted to pass that on to you hopefully you start picking up some real tree stuff this one was kind of swing and a miss. Paid six bucks for this at an estate sale. It sold for 10 plus shipping, so nothing big there. It'll probably just come out about even after I pay fees and everything, just get my money back. I thought this one was gonna be more valuable because it is like the 100 year anniversary thermos of this one, but I think the one that is more valuable, I was mistaken, it's actually like twice the size of this one. Maybe like, I think this might be a liter or so, and the other one's two liters or something along those lines. Another small one, um, I paid five bucks for these Sorel like canvas shoes, and they sold for 14 bucks plus shipping, so I'll make a little bit there. Um, I really think, this is the first time I've ever sold this brand. I know um, to pick them up for sure if they're like winter boots, um, but apparently they're regular shoes, just not as much in demand. Paid three for this Leonard Skinner uh, concert tour shirt from 2003, almost vintage, and I paid three bucks for it, and it sold for 20 plus shipping. I got this uh, new Wrangler shirt that's new with tags within the last week at Goodwill, paid $5.50 for it, and it sold for 25 plus shipping on eBay. Sold at Trigger Point Foot Roller, that's pretty fast. I'm not quite sure where it is. Let's see. This is not really Christmas stuff. Well, there's a Christmas thing. Oh, there it is. All right, there's our foot roller. Um, paid $2 for this at a garage sale, and it sold for $10 plus shipping. So on Facebook Marketplace, so true $8 profit, no fees, and pretty fast flip. A little bit of a slower sales day. I only had three sales on eBay, but still for a pretty good total amount. Um, here was one of my sales. This is the Nike Flyknit Chukka. The Nike Flyknit Chukka. Um, I paid 15 for this, probably at Goodwill. And it's, I took an offer for 35 uh, plus shipping. So made a fair amount of profit on this one and it sold pretty fast. All right, the next two were auctioned items that I started a week ago. And uh, to be honest, on both both things, I really wish I had just set a price, but um, I really, well, I think that I love doing auctions uh, like ahead of time, I think that. I love uh, when people get in a bidding war at the very end of an auction and you can watch just how the price goes up. That didn't happen with either of my auctions today. And they kind of sold for a price less than I was hoping to get. And so I'm gonna have to really rethink uh, doing auctions. I'll show you the two items that were auctioned. So here's my best sale of the day. It is this Cheezosaurus craft, um, like dinosaur t-shirt basically, it's vintage. Um, I go to this garage sale several weekends in a row. The lady has vintage stuff that's like really good. She puts out new stuff every weekend. And I saw this shirt, it's single stitch. I had a gra you know big graphic all over print, front and back. Um, I knew it was gonna be great. And it's on a, oh, I can't remember. It's a Fruit of the Loom uh, tag. And I saw it and I knew it was gonna be worth good money. I looked it up. Um, there were several that had been listed for $199 uh, and then with the mark through where it said that a best offer was taken. And I really wish eBay would just say what the best offer is. I don't know why they feel like they need to keep that a secret. And then one that had actually sold for $125. Um, mine had 
a pencil and a pencil topper, brand new, that went with it. So I listed mine and the title, I put bundle, and then I listed what it was. So I was really hoping, since it was an auction, mine was in new condition with the pencil, the pencil topper. I was hoping I'd at least get the 125 bucks like the other person had. Um, so I listed it at 99.99. I ended up selling it for $103.50. So what's crazy is there was 19 watchers on it. And so I was just really expecting, you know, I had it set where it was gonna end on a Saturday. I had a good time. I was just hoping that there would be a bidding war. And that one bid came through late just for like a dollar or two more. And uh, so it ended up selling for over a hundred bucks, which I only paid, as you can see on here, five bucks. So I can't complain about the sale price. But again, if I had to do it over again, maybe I'd start it at the price that I wanted, you know, a higher price and um, list it like that. And then if it didn't move, maybe turn it into an auction. Um, but again, so my best sale of the day, uh, I was really happy with this vintage t-shirt pickup. It was probably the coolest vintage t-shirt I've ever found just because it was like brand new condition. So that was really cool about it. And I knew that it was going to sell for a ton. So, so my first auction, I had several decks of these Kim plastic playing cards. Um, I made a whole video about that particular sale. I'm not going to put it all here because I don't want to completely bore you. So you can go watch it if you want to hear the whole story. But basically, uh, there's two decks in each set. I had four sets, so eight total decks. They auctioned uh, for $24.01. I had less than $4 into these total, less than a dollar a deck or a set basically. And so these actually have pretty good value. Um, you should sell them on their own. That's the, the punchline to the story that I tell in the video completely dedicated to these Kim Plastic playing cards. But they're vintage and they are super high quality playing cards. So it's Sunday and I had a pretty good sales day. To be honest though, I'm kind of down about it because um, I got a message from a buyer this morning that they hadn't received their item and that they wanted to cancel their order. And so it's December um, 2020 and we're in the middle of like a United States post office um, gridlock essentially nationwide and it's really frustrating um, from a seller standpoint I'm sure from a buyer standpoint too so the issue is I think their item uh, was shipped on the 5th and it was last scanned on the 7th and I think today's the 20th or somewhere around there so it's been like about two weeks in a day or two and so they're frustrated because they haven't received any updates on their item. They want a refund for their item. But from my standpoint, I'm really frustrated because I think that after so many days, eBay is going to force me to give a refund. But the problem is that person is likely still gonna get their item that they ordered. And in this case, it was $30 pair of shoes plus shipping. And I'm just gonna be out both the money and the inventory. And so I'm really fr pretty frustrated with eBay as a lot of other sellers are right now that there's just not better uh, seller protection. Um, and so we'll see what happens. So it kind of feels like I'm excited about the sales that have come through, but on the other end, I feel nervous like, man, these are bigger sales. What is gonna happen if I'm gonna have to refund these and you know the person eventually gets their item so I won't have the item to resell. So here's what sold, um, like I said, pretty high sales price on these, which I'm both happy about and kind of nervous about. So um, I will say one thing that I am doing is the things that are selling for a higher price that were scheduled to go first class, I'm gonna go ahead and bump those up to priority mail, just because in my mind, I, ha I feel like there's a better chance of the priority mail stuff not getting stuck in the post office. I think they put priority on it, and so they move it along faster um, for the most part. That pair of shoes that that person wants a refund, that was sent priority, so I'm not sure what the deal is, but um, here are my sales for the day. Uh, I picked up these kind of like classic Asics um, tiger shoes. They're like, it's like Asics Onosuka Tiger or something like that. And I was really surprised at the price on these. Um, they sold for 30 bucks plus shipping, which I was really happy with. I only paid six for them. I just got this uh, Vineyard Vines shirt that's new with tags. It's a performance like golf shirt, so it's got stretch to it. I got it at a garage sale a couple days ago and I paid 265 for it individually. And it sold for $30 plus shipping on Facebook Marketplace. Okay, <laughs> so this was a pretty good sale. This is a pressure cooker. I think the brand is like Kuhn, Rikon or something. I'm not looking at it right now. Um, I was going to a garage sale and this guy had like one of those storage pods in his driveway and he had a pretty good amount of stuff in there. And I had just watched a video about flipping uh, pots and pans and that sort of thing. So I'd never searched for it before. And this was my first day searching for pots and pans. And I found this pressure cooker. And what's interesting about it is um, the bottom of it had scuffs on it, like maybe, 
I don't know, like it didn't completely look like it had been used, but it, it had scuffs on it, so it wasn't completely clean. Um, but it still had its sticker on it, and then inside it still had like paper, you know, that you would put, that would be inside a new package, basically. And so I couldn't decide if I was gonna list this in new or used condition because it clearly, like someone takes a sticker off before they use a pressure cooker, but the bottom did have some wear on it. I ended up listing it as used because technically a new item is supposed to be, you know, without any errors or anything like that. And so I went ahead and listed it as used, but then put in there that I thought that, you know, it hadn't been used. Um, someone sent me an offer for it for $70 plus shipping. I took the offer. I paid 83 cents for this thing. So it was a really good profit on this one. Um, so here's the deal on this one. You can see the box is rather large. I've got it on here that it is 20 inches by 13 by 12, which is kind of over like the standard shipping for something USPS and that it weighs right under eight pounds. Right after the uh, buyer purchased this, they sent me a message that they had just moved and that they had accidentally not updated their shipping address. So instead of shipping it to like Nebraska, could I ship it to somewhere more up north? And what a lot of people do is they just go ahead and ship it to the new place uh, that someone says when they send a message like that. Now, sometimes what you need to know is that can be a scam. I'm not really sure how the scam works, but um, I'm kind of a rule follower. And so I message back, no worries, here's what we need to do. We need to cancel the sale because I'm supposed to only ship this where, you know, the official eBay shipping address is. And so like, that's how you get buyer protection. If you ship it to somewhere that's not, you know, where the buyer initially said, you can be, if it gets lost or, you know, mistracking, uh, basically you can just be out the money for that item. There's just more seller protection if you send it to where the person originally said they want it to go. But the second issue is I talked about the size and the weight of this thing. Um, originally, uh, the buyer had to pay $20 for this shipping. And when they, when I uh, canceled the sale and then I relisted it and the person rebought it, the shipping was over $40. And so I don't think that this person was doing that intentionally, like saying, ship it here. Uh, and then they changed their mind, ship it here. Um, and I would have been out that money because I would have had to pay that extra 20 bucks. Um, and so that's just a tip for you. If someone does that to you, that that's how you can respond is just say, we need to cancel the order and relist the item and have them buy it again with a correct shipping address, because it's possible that you'll lose out on a pretty hefty amount of shipping if it's something this large. And so that's how I dealt with that one. This was another uh, interesting sale. This is a PS4 Minecraft game and I paid $12 for it at Goodwill. So I definitely paid up for it. It's new, sealed in the package, as you can see. I took a risk on this one because when I looked it up on eBay, it is selling for between $20 and $35 right now. And so I thought, you know, at the least, I'll get the 20 bucks um, after fees and everything, basically get my $12 back. But I listed it hoping that, of course, I'd get closer to the 35 So when I went to list this, um, this is the importance of paying attention to SEO, which is search engine optimization. That's basically how you structure structure the title of your listing. So um, I usually what I do is I sort the sold listings by um, like highest uh, price plus shipping, just to see how people uh, made their title that got the most amount of money. What was really interesting on this one is the title was uh, listed in a way that I would never list something. It had a crazy amount of exclamation marks and asterisks to it, just like a bunch of like filler stuff that I would never use. And so uh, the ones that were much more like structured and how I would normally list something, those were getting about 20 to $25 for this game. The one that had all the exclamations and the asterisks in it, time after time after time, they were selling for about $35. So I thought, this is crazy. I would never have normally made my listing like this, but I went ahead and used uh, that one as a template that had all the asterisks, exclamations, and sure enough, after a few days, this game sold for $34.90 plus shipping, and I got what I was asking for. Someone didn't even send me an offer on it, so that just goes to show you that a search engine optimization is real. Um, and you need to pay attention to what other people are doing with their titles that are getting the most amount of money for their item that you're listing. Another sale that I was really happy with, this is a New Era brand. Uh, that's a brand of the Cap Red Bull logo hat. 
and I got this on Thanksgiving Day. I paid two dollars and fifty cents for it. Um, Red Bull hats and uh, just Red Bull stuff in general, but the hats have really high resale value, um, depending like on how rare they are. I felt like mine was pretty rare because this almost looks like a denim, but I'm pretty sure it's more like a linen. But it's kind of just interesting, you know, dome to it. And it is in absolute excellent condition. Basically, uh, as far as I can tell, unworn. It just looks immaculate. So I put mine up for auction at $49.99 and somebody bought it. And this was a couple weeks ago. They, seven days went by and they didn't pay. And so of course this got relisted for another seven days auction and someone bought it for $49.99 and they actually paid. So um, I didn't get a lot of bids on it. Like I said, just the one bid, but I am really happy with, with basically 50 bucks on it. So I only had 250 in. And um, so be on the lookout for Red Bull branded stuff. Sold this Philadelphia 76ers uh, vintage new tags hat. I paid $250 for this hat. Sold for $15 plus shipping.